Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern, and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Hussein. Our call on number 248. 248- Five five seven thirty three hundred, and now stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host Layla Al Hussein. This morning's show being brought to you by Dish Network. يكون بيتك هو المكان المفضل لأمسياتك الرمضانية التلفزيونية مع الأهل والأصدقاء لمشاهدة أفضل البرامج الرمضانية على القنوات العربية كالعراف وأبو الملايين وحديث البلد مع التكنولوجيا المتقدمة من دش ستشاهد الجيل الأحدث من هذه البرامج من أي مكان وفي أي وقت لمزيد من المعلومات عن العروض الخاصة اتصل اليوم على الرقم واحد ثمانية خمسة خمسة سبعة اثنان اثنان سبعة خمسة خمسة ستة تنطبق بعض الشروط وان ايت فايف فايف سبن تو تو سبن فايف فايف سيك هنا او ربما هناك نمبر 42 نمبر 42 بليز بعد اليوم لن تمنعك اجراء تجديد سجلات سياراتك ورخصه القياده من فعل الاشياء التي تحبها عندما تحتاج للتجديد في المره القادمه فقط ادخل على الموقع الالكتروني expressos.com انه وزيره خارجيتك الالكترونيه وبدون اي انتظار الان معظم الاشياء التي كنت مضطرا للقيام بها شخصيا يمكنك اداؤها عن طريق الانترنت من خلال expressos.com يمكنك تجديد رخصتك تغيير عنوانك وحتى التسجيل في سجل المتبرعين بالعطاء هون عليك استخدم Express pressos.com لا تقف في الصف تحول الى الانترنت الا تفضل ان تكون هنا على ان تكون هنا نمبر 43 نمبر 43 is next هذا الاهلا برعاية وزيرة خارجية ميشيغن وورد جونسون واتحاد مدعي ميشيغن Good morning I'm Atif Abdelgawad reporting from Washington Bloodshed is shaping relationships in the Arab world and with America. In Egypt, at least 104 people were killed since July 8 in the standoff between the interim government and the Muslim Brotherhood. And in Syria, chemical weapons may have been used in the civil war that has claimed about 100,000 lives. And in Tunisia and North Africa, there are signs of violence too. So what the U.S. is doing about that situation and how the bloodshed is shaping the Egypt-Syria relationship? We'll be discussing these issues in the next hour with Aizat Ibrahim, Washington correspondent for al Ahram Daily, Dr. Sahar Khamis, professor at the University of Maryland, and Omar Al-Maqdad, journalist and political analyst in Washington. And let me begin with uh, Mr. Ibrahim, if he is uh, joining us uh, right now. Um, Mr. Ibrahim, I, I don't know if you are still in Cairo or you just came back, but whatever the case, uh, please give us an update on uh, standoff that is taking place in Cairo. It sounds like we don't have Mr. Ibrahim with us. Uh, let me move to uh, Dr. Sahar Khamis. Um, 
Are you in a position to give us an update on the standoff, uh, Dr. Sahar? Uh, yes, good morning, and thank you for having me on the show this morning. Uh, definitely, it has been a very tough and very challenging time for Egypt and for the Egyptian people. Uh, this has been a very worrisome development in, uh, in the Egyptian situation. Uh, you know, in 2011, uh, there was a lot of solidarity, there was a lot of unity. Uh, people were really holding hands in Tahrir Square, all calling for one single request which is down, down with the Mubarak regime. There was some kind of unification and shared vision between all the Egyptians. Unfortunately, this moment of solidarity is now gone and it's replaced by a high level of fragmentation and polarization that we are seeing in the Egyptian political scene and in the media scene, I should say, equally. Uh, people are very, very deeply divided and unfortunately things have taken a very violent turn over the last few days, just like you have mentioned, about the standoff between the interim government and the uh, opposition. Uh, the, the worrisome part, of course, has been the bloodshed, has been the killing of so many innocent civilians, so many innocent lives have been lost, and, and counting. You know, today, Friday, there's going to be a very big uh, protest, very big demonstrations uh, in, in Cairo, in other parts of Egypt as well, and it's always very, um, you know, difficult to watch this kind of escalating violence. Uh, really, there is uh, a lot of fear uh, from human rights organizations. You know, Human Rights Watch has issued a statement uh, expressing concern over the uh, very difficult uh, situation in Egypt. Uh, other uh, organizations like Amnesty International has also issued statements about the deteriorating human rights condition in Egypt. So, I mean, really, we are really witnessing a very tough and very difficult time, and we are still anticipating and seeing what's going to happen uh, within the next few days and few weeks. We hope that this is not going to continue with this very uh, difficult, uh, you know, situation. Now, um, as I understand it, uh, Dr. Hamis, uh, the, uh, the, the, the government um, is warning uh, the demonstrators, the Muslim Brotherhood protesters in Cairo, uh, to break up or uh, they can expect an assault uh, by uh, security forces. Is, is that the case? Yes, this is very worrisome. This kind of ultimatum or this kind of warning in itself uh, raises a lot of, you know, of red flags because it does show that there is going to be some kind of impatience or intolerance with the right of free expression, the right to demonstrate peacefully. And, uh, you know, I've been really uh, witnessing a lot of the uh, back and forth correspondences and, and statements that have been issued by members of the Egyptian-American community here in Washington, in other parts of the U.S. They're, by the way, organizing a very, very huge rally on August 10th in Freedom Plaza here in Washington, D.C., uh, you know, going off to different parts of the Capitol, in front of the White House, in many parts of, uh, of Washington, and it's going to be joined by members of uh, human rights organizations, NGOs, uh, civil society organizations, as well as activists, not just in the Egyptian American community, but also in the U.S. Uh, at large, trying to really take a very, very, uh, you know, big step to make the voices uh, of pro-democracy heard in Egypt and to also warn against this kind of escalation of violence and loss of human lives. But why does the government, the Egyptian government, feel it has to break up the sit-in uh, in uh, the uh, Raba, uh, Raba al Adawiya Square and at, uh, also another square, al Nahda Square. Why does it feel uh, that it has to break up the sit in? Uh, if you remember, um, in New York we had uh, uh, the uh, Occupy Wall Street and uh, the group dispersed uh, by themselves uh, after some time. Why can't uh, the Egyptian government leave those guys sit in? and then perhaps in six months from now they will just disappear. Unfortunately, there has been a lot of intolerance lately of freedom of expression and the right to demonstrate peacefully. It's very different from what has, we, we have been seeing, for example, in the 2011 revolution when the army was neutral. It took a neutral position. It did not really intervene uh, you know, to support one party or one side against the other. We have seen the army in the 2011 revolution took a very neutral stand, and in my opinion, that was one of the factors or one of the reasons that kind of contributed to the success of the 20 
2011 revolution but this time it is very different what we have seen is the army taking a very strict position uh, with the uh, removal or the you know deposing of, of president morsi from from office which has been interpreted of course as you know by many analysts political analysts and many observers as a military coup uh, a position of course that uh, some of the people who are with what the army did would describe as no 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 this is a popular uprising millions of people marched to the street and so on but the bottom line is the army did not take a neutral position in this particular case and therefore there is fear that if the demonstrators will continue and the protests will continue to fill the streets of Cairo and other parts of Egypt that this is going to show the, the really the, the tendency of the Egyptian people to be against what has happened and this is not what what the military wants they want to uh, you know uh, set a new reality show that you know everything is normal life has gone back to normal and the new situation is just uh, a status quo so basically I mean this is a very difficult and very you know again uh, anxious situation we have to really be able to to uh, constrain or to restrict this kind of uh, of violence and this kind of loss of human lives before it really escalates beyond uh, acceptable limits. Mr. Um, Omar Maqdad, uh, before I turn uh, to a question to you about uh, Egypt-Syria relationship, um, is there anything you would like to comment on what is going on in, in Cairo itself right now? Well, first, thank, me, uh, thank you for having me on here today. And just to have a clear view of the current situation in Egypt, we, we must uh, debunk the non-social uh, historical uh, garbage that suggests that the Egyptian military is a neutral. Um, a grand uh, mediator of conducting social and political forces and Stepped into uh, the political sense in January 2011, and again July the second as uh, initial and uh, uh, initial uh, patriotic forces allied with the interests of the people. The reality is that what we have witnessed in Egypt is uh, a, a literal transfer of power in class terms from the civilians in Mubarak government. Uh, representing capitalist interests tried to, uh, tied to the state, to the military, which is, has uh, similar economic interests with, with their uh, enterprises and uh, retired officer population campaigns connect to the state uh, sector. In fact, under President Morsi, the military never really wants a way. Um, it's uh, maintained an independent space in the Egypt state and economy. Uh, critical missile points of, in, in the Morsi, such as the uh, Interior Ministry, Defense and Swiss Canal uh, Authority, we, we give an individual uh, associated with the Mubarak regime that we allied with the military. Anyway, for the Syrian, just to, to jump into the Syrian uh, Egyptian relation. Here we have another level have uh, jumped in, and we have. I, I must bring attention to that. We, we witnesses uh, some dangerous uh, uh, attitudes against in, hum, in human level, in fact, against the refugees who came to uh, Egypt, escaping from the the gunfire and the brutality in, in Damascus and in the whole Syria. These guys who came there. Uh, now, as, as, you under, as I understood and from the, the uh, Egyptian authority, that they, they, it's required to get a visa and it's, it's became a little bit hard to get uh, there to Egypt because of some act um, some people has, had done there. So th this is very, very important and I, I would love to bring attention to because uh, the people are struggling right now and, and we, what we want from the Egyptian uh, government, it's more... Uh, uh, more open on the, the, the Syrian issue, not to uh, make it hard on the refugees. So this is the main points why I want to make here uh, for the for this uh, for in this purpose, because this is very important for for the Syrians who escaped and fleeing the country for a human purpose. Uh, Doctor Atif, I've, I've got a caller on the line here for you. We have a call uh, waiting, and we will take that call after the break in a moment.
ربما سمعت ما عن تغيير كي كبير التي ستحصل قريبا في التامين الصحي ان كان الامر يبدو مربكا لكم الان هايك بامكانها مساعدتكم احصلوا على المعلومات التي تحتاجونها عبر موقع مشجن دوت جاف سلاش هايكاب هايكاب هو برنامج مساعدة المستهلك في التامين الصحي والمقدم من قبل ولاية مشجن سنساعدكم في ايجاد المعلومات التي تحتاجونها لاتخاذ قراراتكم المهمة حيال التامين الصحي نستطيع الاجابة على استفساراتكم مخاوفكم شكاواكم او طلباتكم انه مصدر المعلومات الحيادية المتوفر لكم على مدار ال 24 ساعة في مشجن ولاهالي مشجن ستحدث هذه التغيرات المرتقبة في التأمين قريبا جدا لذا عليكم معرفة خياراتكم زوروا موقع مشجن دوت جاف سلاش هاي كاب مرة اخرى هاي كاب سنساعدكم في ايجاد المعلومات التي تحتاجونها استعدوا زوروا موقع مشجن دوت جاف سلاش هاي كاب اليوم This program is paid for with federal funds ليكن بيتك هو المكان المفضل لامسيتك الرمضانية التلفزيونية مع الاهل والاصدقاء لمشاهدة افضل البرامج الرمضانية على القنوات العربية كالعراف وابو الملايين وحديث البلد مع التكنولوجيا المتقدمة من بيش ستشاهد الجيل الاحدث من هذه البرامج من اي مكان وفي اي وقت لمزيد من المعلومات عن العروض الخاصة اتصل اليوم على الرقم واحد ثمانية خمسة خمسة سبعة اثنان اثنان سبعة خمسة خمسة ستة تنطبق بعض الشروط وان ايت فايف فايف سفن تو تو سفن فايف فايف ست منتجات زياد من عائلتنا الى عائلتكم افضل المنتجات الغذائية على الاطلاق ماركات سلطان كرافت نسلي باك ريجو بيكا دانا بالاضافة الى مجموعة اكبر من المنتجات الغذائية التي تحبها تجدها في كافة المحلات للمزيد من المعلومات قم بزيارة موقعنا زياد دوت كوم منتجات زياد من عائلتنا الى عائلتكم The American Muslim Center works for the community. It establishes goodness, virtue, and develops relationships between the Muslim communities as well as regional and national non-Muslim communities. The American Muslim Center on Outer Drive in Dearborn. Call 313-565-9314 or visit AmericanMuslimCenter.org. Welcome back to our discussion on U.S. Arab Radio. We have uh, guests here, Dr. Sahar Khamis, Professor at the University of Maryland and Mr. Omar al maqdad journalist and political analyst in Washington. But before we uh, go back to our discussion, we have a caller waiting. Uh, please go ahead, introduce yourself. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sami Al-Hadi, and uh, I'd like to welcome your guests and thank you for running this wonderful program this morning. I just want to clarify something that... Uh, my perspective that I don't, uh, I do disagree with Dr. Sahar about the position of the Egyptian army for taking one side uh, on the uh, incident or the uh, situation that happens in July. I believe the Egyptian army had stood in and stepped into the situation to implement the will of the Egyptian people. And uh, the Egyptian army commanders have been trying to solve this problem for at least six months before. But the Muslim Brotherhood and the President Morsi uh, rejected all the, the solutions that have been offered. And also, uh, I would like to compare the situation between the movement that occupying Wall Street, what's happening uh, in New York, and Egypt, what's happening in Rabah, Ladawiya, and al -Nahda. It's a completely different situation. Uh, those people who are standing in New York were like uh, using a specific space for a certain amount of time and they did not uh, cut the roads, they did not uh, build barriers, they did not enforce searching of people going in and their uh, apartments as uh, the situation happening in Cairo, they did not uh, destroy the roads. Uh, it's a completely different situation and we can recall all the demonstrations happening in every uh, civil part in the world when the protests are exceeding the limits, they've been criminal and they've been treated at this base. However, until now, the Egyptian army and the local uh, police, they're trying to send messages to those people who are standing in Rabah, by the way, just go home and let the things go politically solved. But the leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood, which have been under warranties, 
uh, from the legal authorities, uh, they still put some gas on the fire, try to enforce the Egyptian government now to put back and install the Muslim Brotherhood regime. Uh, this is my comment. Thank you very much for giving me the chance. You have a wonderful day and a wonderful show. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Sahar, would you like to respond? Yeah, I would like to respond that, uh, you know, nothing justifies the taking of innocent lives. I mean, there has been massive uh, human rights violations in, in Egypt and very uh, worrisome and very troubling to see so many losses of human lives. I mean, uh, you know, uh, even if uh, there has been some cutting of roads, which I don't think is, is uh, you know, caused by the protesters or the demonstrators, the peaceful protesters and demonstrators uh, as such. Even if there has been cutting of roads or putting some, you know, barricades or barriers here or there, whatever else that uh, the caller uh, may have identified as some logistical issues, that does not uh, justify whatsoever the uh, massive uh, loss of human lives. We have been seeing the bloodshed, the injuries. There have been thousands of injuries and hundreds of losses of innocent human lives. This is is unacceptable under any circumstances and nothing justifies this level of violations of, of human rights. And uh, just like there have been some supporters of the change that has taken place in Egypt, there have been a lot of oppo opponents, a lot of opposition to what has taken place. So I think that really there should have been a different course altogether. What has taken place in Egypt has been seen by many political analysts like Jean Esposito, uh, Marina Ottaway and other uh, even Western writers and observers as a clear derailing of the democratic process in Egypt. The democratic process has been derailed. It has been really taken off its right path path because uh, you know whether we liked President Morsi or not and he might have very well had his own shortcomings uh, had his own failings at some parts uh, he only has been in office for one year and it's difficult to really assess him fairly he did have his own shortcomings but that does not justify derailing the democratic process and taking him out from office uh, through military intervention there should have been some kind of calling for early uh, elections and there should have been a different type of democratic and political uh, course that should have been taking place here rather than the violent course that we are sh uh, seeing and witnessing now. Uh, Dr. Saha, I'll get back to you in a second, but let me uh, turn it to Mr. Mukdad. And my question was, before the break, I wanted to ask you, as you know, um, the government of former President uh, Mohammed Morsi uh, cut off diplomatic relations uh, with Syria just before the government was removed. Uh, so was that the right move? Well, just one point I want to make real quick. Uh, in fact, for the um, military intervention or military coup, as the, some people uh, like to call, it does not need um, millions of people in the streets. The military coups just take over the power without any uh, intervention from the people. This is number one. Number two, we, uh, it's not some people in the way we witnesses in the streets. We millions of, of Egyptians, and that's what the democracy is about. Democracy is not about elections. Many uh, elected governments in West, in fact, which is the democracy's final tradition here, uh, they've been removed uh, and they are elected, uh, and they, are, uh, they have the legitimacy to stay in the power just because they, they, mislead, the, 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 they mislead the country. So uh, for the, uh, the, um, the, the Morsi government, in fact, it's about uh, to cut the relations with the, the Syrian regime. In fact, there's another le uh, level. We... Um, during Morsi time, there's many uh, gunships... Uh, Cross Swiss Canal uh, into Syria from Iran with uh, weapons and uh, with a lot of things. And the, 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 here, the, the Pentagon, there is a report released from the Pentagon that um, one of these, um, plus like an agreement, a uh, secret agreement between the Iranian and the, uh, um, the and Morsi government, will allow for these gunships to come and you know, for what? For killing the Syrians. And it's not, it's not what I, 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 I don't, I don't want to. Uh, go deep in this, but uh, in fact, what I want to say here is uh, the um, Morsi government, it wasn't uh, in, in, um, like they, they did not make the right decisions for, this, for, for Syria at that time and what we see now, but at the same time what we, see, uh, what we, we, we saw here today, that's because of some bad people actions in Cairo with, they, they engaged with the Muslim Brotherhood uh, actions of Rabat Adawiyah they uh, make the whole Syrians there pay the price and uh, the propaganda now is, is widely spread there in the media and we can, we can uh, watch it every day uh, about uh, 
encouraging people to attack the Syrians there, and that's very dangerous. Um, Mr. McLeod, now, if, to your knowledge, uh, w what is the current uh, uh, status of the Egypt-Syria relationship now? I mean, do they have uh, opened uh, embassies in both capitals? Well, there is a news that says they opened the, uh, the Syrian embassy again, the regime embassy, in fact, and uh, there is some talk about uh, relief, the relationship between the regime and, uh, and Egypt, and this is, uh, of course, affected uh, negatively on the Syrian issue, because, as you know, the uh, Syrian regime is it's waiting for an open window, and uh, Egypt can, can represent this window for the regime right now. So, w w it's, it's, in fact... Uh, it is uh, wishes more than facts. Uh, we wish that uh, they are not going to do that, especially at this uh, embarrassing moment. Uh, but uh, the things are, it seems like, going into uh, relieve this relationship between uh, Egypt and uh, the city of Egypt. And Dr. Uh, Sahar Hamis, the U.S. Uh, now says the Egyptian army intervened to restore democracy in Egypt. Why did it take the U.S. so long to come to that conclusion? I know you may disagree with that conclusion, but um, explain to us what you think, why you think the U.S. Uh, has taken so long. Yes, the U.S. has taken a very conservative uh, position towards the whole issue from the start. I mean, it has taken the position of wait and see, did not really issue any kind of decisive or clear statement up till this moment, has been very hesitant to describe what has really taken place in Egypt. Uh, we have not seen a statement coming from the White House, you know, describing this as a, as a, a coup d'etat or, you know, or describing it as a military, uh, as, a, as a military coup, sorry, did not really try to um, explain to us what has been taking place. And there's a reason for that, which is because there is a very strong relationship between, of course, the U.S. and Egypt. Egypt is a very key strategic player uh, in the region. Uh, if the U.S. had described what happened as a coup, then this would have necessita necessitated or required a cutting off the $1.5 billion in military aid that Egypt receives every year from the U.S. So it has been a very sensitive and very delicate situation uh, for the U.S. administration, and the Obama administration has been very conservative, taking a very pos uh, you know, position of really wait and see and not trying to take a clear-cut, decisive position with one side uh, against uh, the other. I think, however, that there is now, as I said, uh, beside the official uh, statement that you just mentioned, there is now uh, rising voices here in the U.S. from the civil society, from American organizations, from NGOs, from intellectuals from elites uh, who are really seeing things from a different perspective than the official administration position. They're really say, seeing a very warning signs in what is taking place in Egypt uh, in terms of human rights violations and in terms of the unrest that's going on uh, in the country. Um, before I resume my uh, discussion with our guests, I would like uh, to let our audience know that we uh, welcome their uh, calls. Uh, you can call us on uh, the telephone number 248-557-3300. One more time. The number you call is 248-557-3300. We welcome your calls and your contribution to this discussion. Um, before I uh, go to Mr. McDad uh, for a question about um, the Cairo-Syria relationship, um, let's go for that break. <laughs> Number 42, please. Express.com. عليك استخدم expresssos.com لا تقف في الصف تحول إلى الإنترنت ألا تفضل أن تكون هنا؟ على أن تكون هنا؟ number 43 number 43 is next هذا الإعلان برعاية وزيرة خارجية ميشيغن بورت جونسون واتحاد مدعي ميشيغن
ليكن بيتك هو المكان المفضل لامسياتك الرمضانيه التلفزيونيه مع الاهل والاصدقاء لمشاهده افضل البرامج الرمضانيه على القنوات العربيه كالعراف وابو الملايين وحديث البلد مع التكنولوجيا المتقدمة من دش ستشاهد الجيل الاحدث من هذه البرامج من اي مكان وفي اي وقت لمزيد من المعلومات عن العروض الخاصة اتصل اليوم على الرقم 1-855-722-7556 تنطبق بعض الشروط 1-855-722-7556 It was my job to save people. Until one night, I was in a car accident. I couldn't work, and the insurance company, they fought me every step of the way. I didn't know what to do. Call 866-YOUR-RIGHTS. I'm Shumana Kehrouz. I know what it's like to be refused your rights. When you call, my attorneys and I will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Shumana handled my medical benefits and lost wages, and she got me a settlement. If you have been injured, call 866-YOUR-RIGHTS. مؤسسة الحياة للإغاثة والتنمية في مدينة ساوسفيلد في ولاية ميشيغان، المؤسسة الرائدة في العمل الإغاثي والإنساني، مؤسسة الحياة ومنذ 20 سنة تقدم العون للفقراء والمحتاجين والمتضررين بسبب الكوارث الطبيعية أو الحروب في شتى أنحاء العالم. كما تقوم مؤسسة الحياة بكفالة الأيتام والعوائل الفقيرة وحفر آبار المياه في مناطق الحاجة، وأيضا تقوم مؤسسة الحياة بتزويد المشافي والمستوصفات الصحية بالأدوية والمعدات الطبية وإنشاء مدارس وعيادات طبية في أقطار عديدة من العالم. مؤسسة الحياة مرخصة للعمل في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وجميع التبرعات معافاة من الضرائب. اتصلوا بمؤسسة الحياة للإغاثة والتنمية على رقم الهاتف المجاني 1 800 أو زوروا موقعهم الإلكتروني على www.lifeusa.org. Welcome back to our discussion on U.S. Arab Radio with our two guests, Mr. Omar Al-Maghdad, journalist and political analyst in Washington, and Dr. Sahar Khamis, professor at the University of Maryland. And I would like our audience to know that we welcome um, your calls, your contribution to this discussion. The telephone number you call is 248-557-3300. One more time, 248 248- Five five seven three three zero zero. Mr. Mahdad, um, how much of an impact will the Cairo situation have on the fighting in Syria? Well, um, in fact, it's, it has a, a lot of effects here. It's uh, you know, Egypt can be a window, uh, an open window for the rearm the, 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 the regime if uh, the things. Uh, Went in its way, uh, going its way to the uh, to relieve the relationship with the regime, as I mentioned before. But what we are witnessing here, uh, there's a, uh, some uh, tough decisions against the Syrians in, in Egypt, who pro democracy, who uh, against Assad. And just uh, uh, to remember, they they turned back a planned lot of Syrians uh, at Cairo airport. Uh, Early last month, and it was uh, a shock for all of us. And uh, the, Syri- the Egyptian television wanted Syrians uh, to street clear of uh, protesters to face the sequence. Uh, and this is not uh, true because we followed this in news. In fact, in Cairo, there is some, of course, some uh, people who joined the Muslim Brotherhood, Rabah al Adawiyah. But that does not mean we cannot say this. This is an example for all uh, Syrians. So it's uh, two levels, in fact, is the issue here. Uh, one, it's about the refugees who is really uh, find Egypt as an open for them, for the, the civilian. And uh, the second level is any relief of the relationship between Egypt and the Syrian regime can understood as uh, a window uh, to rearm the regime through the Swiss Canal. Because, you know, the Iranian now, they don't have any, uh, they, they are struggling, in fact, to send uh, these weapons through uh, airports, so the, the only path they have is the Swiss canals into the Mediterranean. So this is very important to notice here. So what's uh, the, the Syrian main concern about this issue is uh, to uh, urge the Egyptians to stay in their uh, position 
for democracy people and the government of Egypt to still support the Syrians and not let these uh, actions affect the relationship between the Syrian people, in fact, and Egypt. So this is very important. And um, uh, one one more thing, I, I don't think any uh, uh, I don't think any uh, uh, leaving now is the, the situation with uh, or the relation with the, the Syrian regime is going. Uh, to bring any benefits for the, the, the Egyptian regime uh, or the Egyptian government now, because uh, you know, Assad is in uh, as as I, I understood in the last days, and uh, this is not a right decision and wise decision. Um, the, uh, on the, the Syria-U.S. relationship, as you know, the U.S. Uh, has finally decided to provide uh, the Syrian opposition with. Uh, some sort of arms, maybe um, not heavy armament, but um, light arms. Um, uh, to what extent do you think this could um, alter the balance of power in Syria? Well, for me personally, I'm opposing uh, to uh, to any arm for both sides, for the, the Syrian opposition or the Syrian regime, because this issue is not going to solve unless in political manner, just in political manner, and we we got to understand this because. Uh, the, the past we understand it. The past we 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 made like uh, we make lines for our for our uh, uh, pain because what's happening right now the United States and the West and some regional powers supporting the regime with weapons. There's another uh, countries who who who, who feed the regime with uh, weapons also. It's like firing the issue in Syria. So if we talk about political solution here, we, are t we have to stop first the conflict, stop sending weapons, leaking these jihadists into the country, and then we can talk about political solution. And it is it's the only solution I, for, for, the, for the Syrian issue. So it is not um, saying balancing the power in, in Syria, because we are, you are fighting in Syria here. You are not fighting in China or, or overseas. It's... It's a country burned and destroyed. The infrastructure is totally uh, devastated, and this is have, this has to stop. And uh, to continue sending weapons inside the country, I don't think that is going to uh, work. Do you think that uh, President Bashar al-Assad will stay in Damascus as president a year from now? Well, I'm, I hope no. In fact, but. Uh, a uh, based on what we uh, see on the ground and the international community attitude, well, I think the, the things will be uh, a little bit longer than one year. Um, Dr. Sahar, um, generally, is Egypt leading the Arab world into a, what I may call, a counter-Islamist era? Before I answer this question, if I may just comment on something with, which Mr. Omar Maqdad mentioned, which when he talked about the, uh, you know, what is being said about the Syrian refugees in, in Cairo and, you know, the fact you know, that you know, they're trying to portray them as if they've been taking sides and, you know, uh, helping out with the Brotherhood and all of that stuff, that really is indicative of something very serious, which is the propaganda war that has been taking place. You know, we did not maybe talk about this earlier, but there has been some kind of propaganda war, some kind of media war that has been going on inside Egypt which is not less uh, violent or less aggressive than the actual political tension that is taking place on the ground. A lot of rumors have been spreading, a lot of unfounded claims, a lot of accusations going back and forth, and a lot of the media channels unfortunately have been contributing to this kind of propaganda war, including the spreading of some of the falsehoods like the exaggeration uh, and blowing things out of proportion when it comes to, for example, the Syrian refugees and other issues. So I just wanted to highlight this point and then I'd be happy to address your question. Uh, I think that uh, it is very premature and pre, uh, really early to, to, to declare uh, you know, uh, the uh, end or the death of the uh, Islamist movements in, uh, in the Arab world at, at large. I think that they still do have a very wide uh, pop uh, popular base of support. There's a lot of um, you know, uh, backing for many of the Islamist groups with their different variations and different um, ideologies within the Arab region as a whole. Uh, I think it would be uh, premature to say that we're going through um, you know, uh, uh, really the ending or the deterioration or decline of the role as political players uh, in the region. Having said that, however, 
there is some fear of exactly of what you just described as leading the era, in, the whole uh, area into some kind of counter uh, Islamist uh, era. Uh, I think that um, there has been fear of this. There is fear that maybe this is going to be indicative of a new stage where there is persecution again in some of the Islamist groups. Uh, there is going to be uh, difficult times ahead of them. There is going to be more challenges that they are going to be facing. But as I said, it's premature to say that this is going to be ending their political role and their uh, influence in the region. Mr. Mukhtar, any comment? Well, yes, in fact, uh, about uh, the, the media. That's what we, we ask in the, the Egyptians, the Egyptian people to stand for and to say, no, th this is not uh, the case, because we saw many of the, the media, in fact, and this is what's frustrating, uh, attacking on, on Syrians and uh, uh, putting them in this, uh, in this game as a, a Morsi alliance or, or uh, against Morsi, but which is... Uh, which is, can be anywhere, in fact, uh, in the world. Uh, you can you can find some some guys who is uh, who, who want to join the events there. It's okay, it, that's that's great. But you could say all Syrians like this. This is what we exactly. Um, and, and there's some shops also being attacked by uh, some extremists there in Cairo, uh, belong to the Syrians. And and this is this is exactly what I want to say to uh, to our brother in Egypt, just to. Uh, to know what what's the media is doing right now, and uh, some uh, voices is who is attacking day and night on Syrians, just to stand up, say these guys they they flee the horrible situation in their country. They have nothing to do with the events, and what we are uh, waiting from uh, from our people there is to uh, stand beside the, the Syrians in, in this issue. So. That's the, the main things that I want to add, and I, I hope everything will be um, stable in uh, Egypt uh, soon, and uh, I'm counting with the Egyptians. Now, I know that uh, you both are uh, specialists on media, and uh, uh, since you talked about uh, the media uh, coverage and situation um, uh, locally in Egypt and in Syria, I would like to expand the question a little bit and see what you think of the quality of coverage even among regional satellite stations in the area. Do you think that even those television satellite stations have do have their own agenda as well? The question... Uh, let's start with Dr. Khamis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that there has been some kind of, definitely the polarization I've been uh, talking about earlier, the division, the deep divisions. We have been seeing a spillover from the political arena into the media arena where the, the kind of divisions have really kind of, uh, you know, been very clear uh, in some of the uh, media channels. Uh, you know, for example, a channel like Al Arabiya has been, uh, you know, uh, clearly not, you know, not... Um, um, I don't want to say, you know, taking a biased position, but has been very much uh, with what has been ha taking place and happening uh, in Egypt. And, you know, there have been even some kind of distortion of some of the facts. For example, in some of the reports that came out, you know, saying that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has been blocking the ambulances from reaching the, the Rabba al Adawiya Square in order to increase the number of deaths or to increase the number of uh, people injured and therefore to make it a propaganda tool in the hands of the protesters which of course is very untrue. Uh, there has been no blocking of the ambulances on the part of the protesters whatsoever. So it, it was shocking to see you know, a big channel like Arabia, for example, spreading something like that, while uh, Al Jazeera, on the other hand, has been trying to take a more balanced position by showing the voices from both sides and giving space to the protesters and to people who are against what has been taking place in Egypt to make their voices heard, which is uh, unusual uh, in, in the media arena today to have this kind of balanced perspective. So yes, we have been seeing clear-cut divisions uh, among the regional satellite channels and the positions they have been taking. And I worry sometimes for the lack of professionalism in terms of checking the accuracy of the information that is being spread in some of these channels and media outlets. There should be more concern about providing facts about being more professional in the coverage and about providing straight, uh, you know, straight facts and information rather than opinionated, biased uh, positions or opinions. Uh, Mr. Mukhtar, I want to get your comment to well, but after the break in a moment. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
ليكن بيتك هو المكان المفضل لامسياتك الرمضانية التلفزيونية مع الاهل والاصدقاء لمشاهدة افضل البرامج الرمضانية على القنوات العربية كالعراف وابو الملايين وحديث البلد مع التكنولوجيا المتقدمة من بيش ستشاهد الجيل الاحدث من هذه البرامج من اي مكان وفي اي وقت لمزيد من المعلومات عن العروض الخاصة اتصل اليوم على الرقم واحد ثمانية خمسة خمسة سبعة اثنان اثنان سبعة خمسة خمسة ستة تنطبق بعض الشروط one eight five five seven two two seven five five six وصايدين الذهب حبيت ادلعها تنجي دائما لصاحبها زهير عبد الحق مجوهرات رائعه الجمال للعرائس اروع تشكيله من المجوهرات الالماس مجوهرات نادره لا مثيل لها ولا يوازي سعرها اي مجوهرات اخرى في دقه الصنع وجمال التصميم صياغه عربيه واوروبيه احلى قطعه ذهب الالماس البلاتين والاحجار الكريمه وخواتم الزواج لاحلى مناسبه في حياتكم نظام مضمون 100% يشترون الذهب بافضل الاسعار الموجوده في الاسواق بس لحكاف القطع مجوهرات زهير عبد الحق تقع على 5601 شيفر روت في مدينه ديوبون اتصلوا بهم على 313-582-7888 313-582-7888 احلى مجوهرات لاحلى مناسبه زياد براند كواليتي برودكتس من اور فاميلي تو يورز Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Welcome back to our discussion on U.S. Arab Radio. Our guests here are Dr. Sahar Khamis, professor at the University of Maryland, and Mr. Omar al maghdad journalist and political analyst in Washington. And before we go back to the discussion, we have a call. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Mahmoud Adil. I'm calling from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I would like to thank uh, your guests. Uh, for talking about uh, this very important subject. Uh, my uh, my comment here is regarding, uh, I know everybody is talking about the Syrian situation as a, as a big impact of the, uh, of the coup that took place in Egypt. Uh, another humanitarian problem that's growing is the uh, problem with the border with Gaza, Egypt with Gaza. There, is, uh, there, are, hundreds, I mean, there are tens of thousands of Palestinians stuck on the border trying to leave Gaza, and uh, the, uh, the situation is, uh, is awful there. I actually myself uh, was part of this. I came back from uh, Gaza just two weeks ago. I, I, I happened to go to Gaza right before the coup, and you know, at that time, 1,200 people would go in Gaza and 1,200 would leave, and uh, everything was going so smoothly. Was moody and uh, the treatment of the officials on the border was very good. Uh, after I came back, everything has turned around and the treatment of the officials has turned into terrible treatment. And uh, only 150 people would leave Gaza or enter Gaza, and half of the time the border would be closed. And I witnessed tens of thousands uh, from Palestinian side trying to leave and not be able to leave. So. so that's, uh, that situation is really uh, becoming worse and worse in the, by the day. Also, the closure of the tunnel, uh, which is the only uh, uh, in, the only way of the Palestinians to get food and uh, goods. Eighty uh, percent. My uh, my the latest uh, uh, the, the, the latest uh, uh, Egyptian uh, uh, survey was eighty percent of the tunnels have been destroyed. So I, I don't know if you uh, if you're, uh, if you're uh, Yes, can comment on that situation. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hamis. Any comment? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, again, this is something that we have to bear in mind, you know, what kind of uh, political uh, effects this whole situation is having. And, you know, as, as the caller mentioned, you know, we have to bear in mind also some of these aspects, uh, humanitarian aspects, political aspects that might very well result from the ongoing situation and its aftermath and uh, complications. Mr. Mukhdad, um, if, if, you, if you have a comment on this, please go ahead. If not, let me just ask you... Um, to comment on uh, the previous issue we dealt with the media coverage, quality of media coverage on the conflict in the area. Yeah, sure. Well, in fact, uh, the major uh, pan networks, band networks have lost a great deal of credibility in the Syrian story. Uh, at the beginning of the Syrian revolution, the, um, the coverage were uh, very helpful, very useful, because as the voices of the people were uh, getting out to the world. But What's, what we witness now for Al Jazeera, for example, on Al Jazeera, for example, is uh, something, uh, the, 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 the peaceful voices and the voices and the peaceful movements is totally taken aside and marginalized. And just we, we, uh, we are seeing just one, uh, one, one way speech. It's just about the fight, about what's, um, how the Free Syrian Army is going to win over. Uh, the, um, there is no talk about these radical groups who uh, widely spread now in, in Syria everywhere. So it's, it seems like there's another world on, on these TVs, and they started playing a negative roles in this issue. So uh, we encourage them, in fact, I encourage them to to back again to uh, to be fair because that's really uh, uh, frustrating here. It's a lot of um, uh, peaceful movement, a lot of. Um, uh, opposition uh, fronts, uh, democratic fronts, uh, b b women uh, for peace. Uh, there's a lot of fronts inside the country now. They are fighting, uh, and and they are getting targeted by both sides. But we we never hear about I any of these stories on TV. And this is one of the problems with channels like Al Jazeera and and even Al Arabiya TV, which is I call them the Mangangwar people. And this is exactly what we don't need right now. What we need in in, in um, to be more fair on TV, to tell what's happening, to tell the things how it looks, and that's what's going to help the people to make the right decision. Dr. Sahar Hamid, some people uh, say that even if the Cairo sit-in is broken up, those guys, I mean the Muslim Brotherhood, are not going to go away. Something else needs to be done. Uh, what do you think about that? I think that there's really a very uh, important need to go back to the democratic process and the political process. There is now a very big challenge facing Egyptian people, which is how to reconcile. I talked earlier about the uh, move from, uh, you know, what I call from pluralism to uh, polarization. Plurality is good, to, be, to have different voices is good, to have diversity is good. But the very deep divides and polarization that we are seeing with every party accusing the other and attacking the other very vigorously and aggressively, this is very dangerous. And in order for the situation to calm down, really there has to be some kind of move towards reconciliation, towards bringing back people into some kind of dialogue, which is highly missing nowadays in Egypt, People need to build or rebuild, I should say, the, the uh, process of trusting the other, sitting down, starting to talk, starting to negotiate, which is going to be a big challenge because there is now a high level of division and a high level of mistrust or distrust between the different parties. I think that as long as the killings and the uh, shootings and the you know, atrocities continue, there is going to be an escalation in what we are going to be seeing in the coming weeks and, and uh, you know, months. We need to kind of halt all of this, not by killing, because violence breeds even more violence. What we need is bringing back people to the table, trying to start a process of dialogue, trying to reconcile the different groups, and trying to have everybody participate in some form of true participatory democracy. Mr. Mugdad, um similarly, some uh, people are saying, are talking, are hinting at... Uh, a possible divided Syria. They are saying that Mr. Bashar Assad will stay. He, he is gaining control, but will ultimately have control, but not over the entire territory of, uh, of Syria, Syrian territory. There will be a division. What do you think of that uh, potential division? Hello? Can you hear me? No, I can. Yes. Oh, let, let, let me ask you again. Yes, some people, some some people are speculating that ultimately Syria may have to be divided. 
Uh, they are uh, pointing out to the fact that uh, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad is uh, is gaining control, uh, but ultimately he will control uh, not the entire uh, Syrian land territory, but just part of it. Well, uh, well, I, I, I must admit it here. In fact, yes, that's one of our problems here with the Syrian opposition. In fact, the Syrian opposition. Uh, split out of the country and that's um, effect on, inside the country and we have different fronts uh, fighting for different ideology and this is w one of the main main problems here because you know uh, uh, every regional power in the, in the world has now its team inside the country and they support their group and uh, with, with they fund it with money with weapons with everything so this is the problem. When you when you have many players here in the game, so it's uh, the, the things is gonna be worse and worse. And the, and again, this is one of the uh, the things is relieve Assad regime, in fact, and give him uh, the chance uh, to to win over some conflicts in Al Qusair and Homs and many other places inside the country. So this is very important to notice. The, the opposition, it seems to me, lost. There is the the the, fire, the groups inside the country who is fighting the regime is now also split. They, have, they are not connected to each other. They, they work in different agenda, and this is exactly what the, the revolution has nothing to do with it. And that's why we are opposing to leaks any jihadists against the country, any money, any support, any uh, weapons, because that is not helping, as, I, as, I can, uh, as anyone can tell, in fact. It's what it's doing on, on the ground is just that these, um, these weapons uh, somehow is turned into uh, is turned to our chest, and uh, that's happened with with many of the the journalists who used to cover the uh, from the uh, liberated uh, what, the, what is called liberated area in Syria, in north of Syria, and many of them targeted and injured, and I just showed them the piece, the piece of fact that. Syria became the, the most dangerous place in the world for dangers. Not in the regime held territory, in fact, in the opposition held territory. And this is tell you a lot. And and that's what we need to, to do right now. We need to stand over, uh, over and say that's what uh, that does not what we need, and we have to stop this mass destruction and giving the regime that the 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 pretext and the excuses to use its jets against this um, this area. These neighborhoods and and the civilians. Finally, the only sect in Syria who is paying the price in in this conflict. So unless we have, we believe and understand that this issue is not going to be solved, just in political manner, we're not going to solve it. And that will go years and years. And I'm, I'm scared that we are moving uh, rapidly to the uh, Algerian or or, or Somalia. Uh, Model, and this is uh, not happy news. But but what also uh, Assad is is uh, giant the, the the media uh, in the international community. He seems like that fresh pragmatic leader in facing the um, the radical jihadists who came from Stone Ages, uh, and and that's very important. That I can notice that here in the in the international media. I can there, there is a cha they changing the mood and the tenor. Of the public opinion, and when you put Bashar al Assad with his uh, with his wife on, on TV, and you put these radical groups who is calling for a Sharia law and Khilafat and the rest of it, and it seems for me that the guy is 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 winning the ground, he's winning the ground, and is winning the the media. So we need to change this strategy, and we try trying all the time to push the Syrian opposition to change this strategy because it's not working, and to call these neighborhoods a liberated area is I'm sorry, it's a devastated neighborhood. It is not a liberated neighborhood. So we, we need to change all this. And, and uh, yes, this, we have to admit that we have a lot of problems need to be solved if we want to win this war. Uh, Dr. Sahar Hamid, you get the last word in, in 30 seconds only. If you were to deliver a piece of advice, a brief piece of advice to both, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and also the military in Egypt, what would you say? Stop all forms of violence and go back to the table, start to talk, reconcile, uh, sit together, start a new chapter in the interest of the Egyptian people and in the interest of Egypt's best future. Thank you, Dr. Sahar Khamis, professor at the University of Maryland. Thanks very much. And thank also you. would like to thank Mr. Omar al mukhdad journalist and political analyst.
in Washington. In conclusion, this is Atif Abdelgawad reporting from Washington. ليكن بيتك هو المكان المفضل لأمسياتك الرمضانية التلفزيونية مع الأهل والأصدقاء لمشاهدة أفضل البرامج الرمضانية على القنوات العربية كالعراف وأبو الملايين وحديث البلد مع التكنولوجيا المتقدمة من بيش ستشاهد الجيل الأحدث من هذه البرامج من أي مكان وفي أي وقت لمزيد من المعلومات عن العروض الخاصة اتصل اليوم على الرقم واحد ثمانية خمسة خمسة سبعة اثنان اثنان سبعة خمسة خمسة ستة تنطبق بعض الشروط one eight five five seven two two seven five five six this is WNZK Dearborn Heights Detroit your ethnic superstation at six ninety days six eighty nights do 